first of all, I want to talk about, it seems like a hard enough job to bring Batman to life, yeah. as you did. What was the challenge? Was well, it easier? A lot of us brought yeah. Batman to life, first and foremost, Chris, but yeah. go ahead. But what about with this character? What about Man of Steel, Superman? I think Superman's harder. I mean, I think, uh, I remember someone asking me in the press junket for Batman Begins whether or not I'd ever want to take a crack at Superman, and at the time I said no. Um, I didn't have an affinity, or as close an affinity for the character as I had for Batman, and I, I, I think he's inherently harder because he's an alien, because he comes from another world, because he doesn't seemingly have as many vulnerabilities. It was a daunting task and a terrifying task. I remember, um, you know, I had a basic pitch and we got the deal, you know, to do it. And I remember sitting down at my computer and I was procrastinating, procrastinating. It was time to actually start writing the script. And I thought, oh my God, I don't know if I can do this. And the first scene I wrote was the scene in which uh, Jor-El and Laura give their baby up. And I just said, I'm going to write it from the perspective of two parents literally having to give their newborn child away and say goodbye to him. This is, they have to say hello and goodbye in the same scene. And I wrote that and I said, I'm just going to forget the fact that they're aliens and pretend as if it were me doing this uh, because um, my son was born, you know, during this film. And I thought, and so I wrote this scene and, you know, I got emotionally choked up and then I thought okay now I can do this I ju I'm just gonna forget that they're aliens and forget that he's this iconographic character and try to relate to him as much as I can uh, from my own personal experiences what is your proudest scene the one scene that really besides obviously the most personal scene maybe the, the leaving the child what is the one scene that really you think works more than anything at least you're the most proud of I, I think I'm most proud of the the um, Probably the scenes between Clark and Jonathan Kent. Uh, those are the ones that really touched me. Those are the ones that I related to a lot because I'm also a stepfather. Yeah. And a lot of those scenes were informed by conversations that I had, you know, with my stepson. Wow. Um, those are the ones I remember being in the field uh, when we were shooting the scene in which uh, Jonathan has to tell his son, you know, essentially he's not from Earth, and. Uh, that was an incredibly moving experience for me. Um, we shot it in Illinois about three hours from where I'd grown up in a field very similar to the kinds of fields that I played in when I was a kid. And just to have Kevin Costner sort of say these words and then come up after me, uh, come up to me afterwards and say, hey, was that okay? How, did that work for you? Wow. What, are you kidding me? Yeah, that worked great. Now, was this always plan to be a, a, a reintroduction to the character or, or did he, because it's been through so many gestations with the Smallville or uh, Superman. It Return. was, it was. I mean, it, I mean, what Chris and I decided early on with Batman Begins is that we had to approach the Batman mythology as if no other films had existed mm -hmm. because I think then you get in a trap uh, and, and some of the people of the today have, have, have acknowledge that, and Zach has talked about that, we had to do the same thing with Superman. We had to pretend that none of the films had ever existed because, you know, we were aware of the fact that a large percentage of our audience might not have seen the Donner films, yeah. or Lois and Clark, you know, the show, you know, in the 80s, or things like that, and... I tried and, to forget about that one myself. <laughs> you know, but every, you know, various people have their own iteration of who Superman is, you know, their Superman, and I think, I think that if you try to do an homage or you try to just assume that the audience knows this or that I think it can be um, there can be a lot of pitfalls with that approach in looking back and doing the research and finding the way to start it what was the biggest help for you uh, going back to the comics and specifically which which in, which incarnation it wasn't, it wasn't the comic books one of the things really? I mean it started with the comic books but then I I thought well what references were Siegel and Schuster drawing upon when they created Superman and whenever it was, 37 or 38, yeah. um, 36. So I read some early interviews with them back in the 70s and they talked about the New Testament and the Old Testament and one of them referenced Beowulf and uh, Gilgamesh and there was an old Philip Wiley novel called Gladiator and so I said, okay, fine, I'm going to try to roll back the clock and get back to the original DNA of where this character came from. Obviously, you are going to be aware that they're going to make, oh, Dark Knight, oh, you guys are doing the same thing. 
although it's really not. Can you explain why it's so different? Well, I think there was an assumption that because because the Dark Knight trilogy was gritty, that we would also make the Superman film gritty. Yeah. Um, and Chris likes to use the word relatable, which I think is probably a better and more useful word than more real or realistic. Yeah. Um, we tried to make Superman relatable, and and relatable doesn't necessarily mean grim and gritty. Yeah. It just means relatable. So it just means you can't take things for granted. You can't just assume, oh, I, he comes from another planet and everyone accepts that. Um, so you have to take everything at face value. He's an alien. Uh, the fact that he exists means that there's intelligent life in the universe. That's a big deal. And so you have to kind of follow that back to its logical conclusion. Well, also the idea that he is special and this world tends to eat its special alive. He is special and he is different and he would be special even if he had no superpowers. Mm -hmm. With Justice League, do you feel pressure to win writing this? To say, oh, well, I've got to prepare for that? Or was it all simply, no, I'm telling this story? The pressure was this story and believe me, reinventing Superman uh, was pressure enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, Chris was gracious enough to invite me onto the Batman films and help him reinvent Batman and, and, and trust me, reinventing Superman was an incredibly daunting task and you know, if I had never done anything in my career but work on the Batman films, that would have been enough. And working on Superman 2, that would have been enough. <laughs> uh, so as for the future, we just want this film to come out. It's two weeks away, I've been working on it for four years and we just want people, we hope people respond to it in the way that uh, we're hoping they will.